Hello all, welcome to rotrainers.com. In this session, we'll discuss about how do we split Excel data into multiple sheets based on a specified row count. So to design this logic, we require two templates. One is a pre-processor XLT template, which provides information about what is the group name and on what basis you have to group the data. Another one is the Excel template in which we mentioned the the columns as well as records. Nothing but a, like um, you have the column information and you'll have a recording, like a repeating group information. Now, so like there are set of prerequisites or, you know, like a, we have to follow a certain rules so that like we can get the desired output. The first very important thing is data model. So now here, if you observe generally, like when you design a data model, the top level data structure will be data DS and, you know, like uh, the row, the XML tag for this particular, your uh, data source can be anything based on what you mentioned. But you know, like for our easier understanding, what you do is just make sure that you change the data structure top level tag to row set and the group tag to row. This is the first thing. Next thing is coming to the very important logic, the pre-processor XSLT template. The sample is provided in Oracle documentation and we'll try to understand because the very important thing is we need to understand how it is designed so that we can modify according to our requirement. So in this particular, the total whole logic is here, what we are trying to do is we just want to mention on what basis on what, like uh, this logic is based on the number of, based on the number of records, how many, like based on the number of records, you want to divide the data into multiple sheets. Nothing but in my case, assume that I'm getting 100 records. I want to split the data based on the number of records, like 20. For each 20 records, I want to have a different sheet. In your case, let us say, if you want to split the data based on around 65,000 records, mention them appropriately. So here you just mentioned the maximum count on which you want to split the data. Okay, so I mentioned 20. And now here, if you observe, here it is reading the data for each row in the row set. It is reading the data for each row in the row set. And it is trying to get the current position of that particular record. And then it is performing a modulus operation. Now, let us say here, I mentioned the tabular format to understand what exactly we are trying to refer. So in the first iteration, like uh, the iteration one, the variable position will be one and the variable underscore mod value will be one by 20. And if you observe, if if at all, if at all a test where mod is equal to one, right? If at all, like this will not get satisfied because the modulus will not be one. So nothing but you're trying to get the reminder of it. So. So based on whenever the whenever it's satisfied, then only you'll have a value for your group name. So there are two important values we are getting from this particular XSL, XSLT file. The first thing is count group, which tells you what is the like on way on like how the grouping is happening for your data. Now like you have under records and how to how many groups like to into how many groups it is getting divided and what is that group name. So this count group will group the data and it will generate the name, generate the group name in the attribute called NAME name. Okay. So now these are the two important tags which we are getting from the XLT file. And like the same logic follows for uh, like iterations and you know, like you'll have these two values generated like a count group as well as name. Okay. So now coming to the template part, the Excel, Excel template part. So there are a couple of values we have to change it. The first thing is in the pre-processor Excel template, you mentioned the XSL file. Like uh, whatever you mentioned, whatever the file, be, like the XSLT file, right? So this has to be saved in a file and with the dot ex extension dot XSL. And in our case, we saved it as XX split logic dot XSL. And in the XDO metadata file of the template of Excel sheet, make sure that we mention the pre-processor XSLT file name as well as XDO sheet underscore value as well as XDO sheet underscore name value appropriately. Okay, so make sure that you mention this count group and name appropriately. If at all, if you have a different value for count group and name, that's you have to mention them appropriately in the XDO metadata file. Okay, and final output, this is how it is expected. Like you'll get, like in our case, I have 100 records, so it generated five groups. Okay, now let us start the logic now. So now let us prepare the data model. So the first thing is the query. So I'll copy the query, it's simple AR invoice query. So I'll just create a new data model. I'm saving the data in the, I'm saving the DM in the Mora Trainings folder, split data. Maybe I have you, I'll try to use appropriate naming convention. So this is my, DM name. 
and this is will be our query a simple error invoice query so here i mentioned 100 rows let us see if you mention what you call around 300 rows so then obviously it will generate 15 sheets let's say i'll mention 150 so that it meant it will generate around seven or eight okay i'll save it now click on data or first of all click on structure here if you observe by default as i said you it will start with the data structure data underscore ds we don't want to change this one so we want to change it to row set the only reason why are we changing because our xslt is following that hierarchy you know like if you want if you want to go with the data ds make sure that you change the xslt accordingly that's all it's tough well it's I'll consider row set and row, okay? And if you don't want to have any confusion, what you can do is here also in the properties, change everywhere it has row like this so that you'll not have any confusion anywhere. And okay. Fine, just click on view. Row set and row. This is what we require. Remaining can be anything. As of now, you can ignore and save it and export. So let us get the XML file. Once we get the data model, prepare the template. Okay. So I'll copy to the this folder. Now let us prepare the template. And what's the file we want to mention? The name I want to mention is split data based on row count TMPL. So and what is a file extension? It should be Excel 97 hyphen 2003.xls. Okay. Now, so the columns, what we want to display in the output. So hopefully, like these all columns. And here, if you observe, I don't have primary sales rep name, so it is empty. So in the XML, you may not have the tag, right? So what we can do is in the click on the properties so that it will generate the empty tag for null elements also. So that like uh, you'll not have any confusion while generating the XML. So let me try that. Okay, export. You can see sales rep. Right, now we got the empty tag. Okay. I'll just copy. Here. Now, let's open our Excel template, which copied the columns. Next thing is click on BI Publisher, sample XML. Split database and row count, select the data model. Now click on field. At this point, it will create the metadata. Let it create. Now transaction number, transaction ID, primary sales rep, payment terms, legal name, class source name, type name, BU name. That's it. Now till this far. Till, like, uh, till this particular steps are the common steps which you generally use for the Excel template and select the row and click on repeating this one and mention the repeating group name. Click on OK. Now coming to the very important part, enable the metadata sheet, unhide. And now here what we have to mention, the pre-process Excel, XSLT file. So let me open my XSL, XSL file. 
one minute. I better open with the notepad. I'll open with this particular notepad plus plus. That's the easiest thing. Okay, so this is a XSL file. Okay, now copy the name mentioned here. And apart from this, what you do is here before this field one, just create two records and mention the the main elements what we need to mention was first is the grouping logic other one is the what is the sheet name you want to mention xd underscore sheet underscore we want to mention this particular count group and for this we want to mention name okay so far the design of this particular template is almost done now try to click on excel I mean the output. So here we are not getting the desired result. Okay. The reason is like this XSLT. If you want to test your logic in the what you call in your desktop, it will not work. Okay. So only way you can validate is from the instance, your BIP instance. Now we'll go back to the instance. We'll create new report. Better save the report name first of all. Select the template. Yeah, now comes the very important part upload the Excel template. Excel local as English. So Excel part is done. Now we have to upload the style sheet also, XSL style sheet also. So save it first of all, click on add your layout again. Now upload and this time select the XSL file. And here you can mention the same name here, XX. And the type as this one XSL style sheet and this property HTML XML text property and the local as English upload. Click on save and click on view as a list. We want to check some property here. If you observe, even the split logic is active by default. Ideally, it is not required for the end user, it is only required for the developer. If at all, if your particular output is not working fine. For now, what we do is simply click on view report. Let us see how the output of our report is and also see how the split logic is generating the XML data. So now let's click on the split logic Excel output. Right, so it generated the appropriate eight reports. Of course, we have not hidden the XDO metadata. That's why it's shown. But you know, if at all, if you hide it, it would have been fine. Now, the next thing is just observe what exactly in the split logic is. So let me try if at all if it generates the XML properly. And if you if you observe the split logic count group, right? Just search for the count group. It would have a ha it would have having eight groups, right? Like uh, the data is getting grouped, and in the row. So what is happening is in the row for each particular row. You see this one. In the row set in the row set it is adding an attribute called count group and it is mentioning the group name now our, as per our excel sheet logic it is grouping the data all the records these 20 records are part of group one and the sheet name will be group one and similarly the next set of data will be part of group two and the name of the sheet will be group two that's how it is getting divided so the grouping is happening based on the style sheet template what we mentioned so like if at all, if you want to change the logic, if at all, if you want to divide the data based on the number of records or, you know, like a, a different record count, what you have to do is just update, update the XSL, XSL file and then upload this Excel again 
you have to delete it you know like there is no option like replacing the existing file you have to delete the existing one and again upload it okay so this is how we can just divide the data based on the number of records and based on nothing but a style like a the XSL file logic, which you mentioned. Okay, thank you.